guys, Prince of Mastodon here. Gonna do this commentary video for a Napoleon Total War Online battle that I had. This was fought on the Salamanca province map. It's like a little uh, mountain, I mean a little uh, map with um, with a little town in the middle. Anyways, this is a France versus Prussia battle. I command the French. My opponent is just a soldier in command of the Prussians. Um, let's go look at the armies first. As you can see, I have a lot of upgrades on my, my units. Start with my general unit. This time I brought Napoleon. A very expensive unit, but you get a huge um, morale boost. And there he is. He's got one little experience chevron. Um, I've got a unit of the old guard. Here they are. One experience chevron too. Then I have uh, eight units of the fusiliers. I believe they all have a uh, an experience chevron. Some of them have two. Then I have, let's see, four units of the voltigeurs. These guys. They also have one experience chevron. And I put them on both um, both wings. I'm gonna keep them back for now until I really need them. And then finally, I have two squadrons of cuirassiers, just two. So I didn't bring too much cap this time. All right, let's go look at the uh, Prussian army commanded by just a soldier. He has um, three units of the uh, Salesian Schutzen. And um, let's let's actually show his general first. His general's back here. He actually brought a, a historical general as well. This is uh, Gerhard von Schoenhurst. There he is. Very cool looking. Well, the tree's in the way. Um, and there's one experience chevron on him, but on the rest of his units, there are no experience chevrons. So he went for um, quantity, I suppose. Um, he has two units of the 12th founder foot artillery. And they're about to light me up. Kabooj! Um, then he has four units of musketeers. Where are they at? They are spread out here. He has uh, four units of musketeers. Uh, well, these are actually foot guards we're looking at. But he has four units of musketeers and three units of foot guards. Then he has two units of dragoons. Let's see if we can locate his dragoons. Here they are. That's his deployment. All right, let's see what I'm doing. I started the battle going right at my opponent. Like I started charging, like with my cav, my cuirassiers. I went right for his uh, Salishin Schutzen. And I also raced for his um for this building. I saw his troops going inside, but I saw that there were only, um, there was only like one unit, so I, I raced tons of my guys right at that building. And if you look on the mini-map, you can see how far I am into my enemy's uh, territory. But yeah, I'm already fighting right for this building. And with my, um, my cuirassiers, I went right for his uh, Salishin Schutzen. I noticed that his cab was a little farther back. They are catching up to me. There. Here comes his dragoons. They're coming to save the uh, Salishian brothers. But um, the damage is done. I wiped out a lot of his um, his Schutzen. Those are his skirmish units. And now our cab's gonna go at it. I turn back to slow down this this unit of of dragoons. And with my other Crassier unit, I'm using him to slash into the rest of his Salesian Schutzen. And you can see my opponent tried to deploy stakes at the last second when he saw me charging, but he deployed them the wrong way. Because my Fusiliers. And here my opponent is beating me with his Dragoons. Actually it says these guys are losing, but I only have one unit of 17 Cuirassiers. He has two units of Dragoons, but look at that, I drained them down to 22 and 18 respectively. So that little downward charge by my guys helped out. And um, now I have this unit back here of Fusiliers to support my, my Cuirassiers. I think I'm shooting my own horses though. But at least I'll be able to shoot his guys too. All right. So yeah, I'm still I'm still fighting for this building here. I really want this building. I'm gonna rush all my guys into it too. We're gonna file in here. I figure that if I race my guys, my guys might be a little bit tired, but it might be worth it if I capture some of these um these key elements on this map. Here I'm getting flanked by these um what are these foot guards and musketeers? But at the same time, I'm shooting these guys. But my guys are not in a very pretty situation, tactically speaking. They're being shot from the flanks, that's not good, never a good thing. But I am fighting for this building here. I'm actually tossing tons of guys for that building. But, um, yeah. These guys here, they can't really take this, so I am going to withdraw them. I noticed it too late that his guys were flanking me, so I lost a lot of my guys. See this? It's like little sardines here. But luckily I kept them intact. And like, every little does help. You're gonna see that in this battle, that every little will help. So if you can cut your losses, do it. Um, these guys did route, though. 
they got in a fight with these uh, foot guards inside this building, and they did not fight too long. Lots of dead bodies in here. And you can see that we're still fighting for this little building. Our men are running, sir. I got some guys running over here. Those are probably my cuirassiers. Yeah, his dragoons finally broke through. Oh, I'm sorry, he also has some lancers too, my bad. I didn't even, I didn't even notice those guys. He has a unit of lancers. But um, I have this unit of uh, fusiliers back here. We're going to shoot these dudes as they get closer. Those are his uh, lancers. I guess he had, what, two units of lancers? Yeah, I'm sorry. He had two units of lancers and two units of dragoons all together for his cav force. I guess I missed them because they're probably hidden in the forest. All right, I'm rushing in more uh, fusiliers into this building. That's how determined I am to take this, um, this structure. All right, I brought up Mr. Uh, Monsieur Napoleon. Here he is. I had to um, restore the morale of my, my guys. They got flanked earlier. And there he is, guys. The Emperor of France. Or the Emperor of the French, whatever. I saw these guys coming this way to flank me, so I did have these guys repositioned to receive his flanking attack if he chose to, to flank me. And these guys are going to withdraw. The only thing he has left are these guys fighting for this building. But yeah, I'm going to keep pouring my troops in here. Like, I've already put so much into this effort. To abandon it now would be a, a waste. Like, I remember I said earlier to cut your losses. In this case, that was an exception. I did not want to cut my losses here. Because I figured that if I take this, then this will have a dramatic effect on the battle. Um, you can see my skirmishers are back here. I am starting to bring them up now. These are my voltageurs. And I already cleared the threat of my opponent's skirmishers for the most part. His um, Salesian shoots in. He had three of them. I had four voltageurs. Alright, he does have this uh, Prussian unit right here. Musketeers. They're kind of hanging out. And they're going to withdraw. They're going to rejoin his, uh, their Prussian brothers back here. Yeah, the Prussians did not want to fight for this town. Like, I'm already on my, my opponent's side of the map here. And that's because I, I raced all the way out here. Like, I lost a lot of energy doing so, but, you know, I, I gained a positional advantage over my opponent by sacrificing, um, energy. Alright. So, we're still plugging away at these, uh, dudes here. But now I'm going to bring up Napoleon here. I think Napoleon's going to make the uh, the difference here. So I'm going to bring this guy up. And I'm going to rally my men. And was that rally button? Look at that. Boom. His guys do get incinerated. And they rout. There are 25 of these um, foot guards. That's why I had such a hard time fighting these guys. Because they were elite foot guards. But um, yeah, in this case, Napoleon's presence did have you know, somewhat of an impact on that fight. Like, he boosted the morale of my guys fighting those foot guards. So I guess that's one, you know, one aspect where having a an expensive historical general like Napoleon could be decisive. But on the other hand, he is a really expensive unit. So if you lose him, then you just wasted so much money. So you got to preserve that kind of unit at all costs. And meanwhile, his um, twelve hundreds are like really raking my guys. Just kind of having a, a field day. I have no artillery to respond with. But um. You know, it's a sacrifice, because I had more... Th that enabled me to buy more heavy infantry. So they're going to reload, and they're going to fire my guys again. Let's see where they fire this time. Well... There we go. They are firing... Kind of at this building, since I rule it now. I got my Fusiliers right here. They're hiding behind this building. Or are they? Not the best place to hide, but it's close enough. Alright, my opponent's bringing up his Lancers here. And I got my Voltageurs right here. See, I am uh, pouring fire on these Lancers as they get closer to me. One's at 17, the other's at 16. And my guys were not, like, standing on the ground, so they, so they wasted time running backwards. And so he's going to charge into my guys over here. I'm bringing up a unit of Fusiliers to help, help out. And unfortunately, I believe this unit of Voltageurs get routed, I believe. Sorry to spoil the ending for you, but yeah, I think these guys will route. 
It's pretty common sense though. Look, he has his Lancers here taking on my Voltage Wars. And it says we're losing. Oh well. Um, but over here though, the presence of my Fusiliers are are really um, assisting in the fight against these uh, Lancers. They're helping out my, my Voltage Wars. But I did lose my first unit of Voltage Wars. That was, that was my own mistake. There they go, they're, they're running. And his Lancers are just stabbing me. But luckily I routed these guys. Actually I think I killed them to the last horse. So I traded one Voltageor for one of his Lancer units. I think that's almost fair. Ideally I wouldn't want to lose anybody. Oh here! Okay, I noticed start you know my building was on fire, but because of the lag I couldn't get my guys out on time. Like I was actually pressing on them. Unfortunately they all died. Look at that. That is so dramatic. But cool though. Very cool. Too bad happened to my guys though. Alright, Monsieur Napoleon. What to do now, my friend? What to do now? What I'm gonna do now, I'm going to uh, pull back. See, uh, since I raced all my guys here, they're all they're all exhausted and tired. Well, some of them are. And I lost tons of guys going for this building. And so I decided I needed to break. Because I did take that, that huge offensive at the beginning of the battle. So I need to rest my men, and I, I need to take uh, shelter from his artillery. So I'm going to hide behind these buildings here with my, my units. Even Napoleon gets to take cover here. There he is, he's going to face this building. And I hope you can hear me better now, because I turned the volume on the game way down. So hopefully it's um, easier to hear. But yeah, I'm taking these wizards. I'm going to bring them back. There's no use standing out there if, if I can't even shoot back at his artillery pieces. So I'm going to hide behind this building. And you can see he just took a shot at my Fusiliers, but the building got in the way of the shot. So that was a good thing, right? What's going on here? I think my opponent's bringing his Lancers back. They're down to 12 men. Alright. So. we got my Voltage Ors hidden in this forest right now. For some reason, I thought that there was a Prussian unit over here, but clearly you saw that Prussian unit that was right here, you saw them run back to unite with the rest of the Prussian army. But when I was fighting the battle, I didn't see that. So I kept my Voltage Ors back on my left a little... I felt, I, you know, I left him back a little too long. Longer than necessary. But had I seen his his soldiers move out of there, then I would have easily... Then I would have, you know, moved these uh, skirmishes up, you know, up a little sooner than what you see in the video. But yeah, Salamanca is uh, on fire right now. And I'm going to um, consolidate my position here. And I'm going to unite my troops. Set them together. And my guys are heavily depleted. Look, the senior here is down to 23 men. 23 from 80. This one, these are my, my old guards, so they're still at 80 men. And that's my that's my elite unit right there. And while as I'm resting, my opponent's bringing up a foot guard unit. And... I'm not sure what he was trying to do here, but he's going to bring up a unit of foot guards. I think he just wanted to trade fire with my old guard. But my old guard, not only are they elite, but they also have the the, uh, the flanking support of these fusiliers who are nearby. So I I just moved these fusiliers up. So now it's two of two of my units versus one of his. So I'm not sure what my opponent's trying to do there. But yeah, I was trying to rest my guys because yeah, I took that I made that early blitz at the beginning of the battle, and that really drained my my resources in terms of manpower, and it also it made my guys tired. Because fighting for that building was a huge drain on on my man on my manpower. All right, now my opponent's bringing up a unit of musketeers, but this unit right here is getting hacked. These um these foot guards here, and I've got my general nearby to provide uh, moral support just in case they need it. But I'm pretty sure they don't need it in a two versus one situation. Alright, so, here my opponent brought up a unit of musketeers to outflank me, and I'm just going to move these guys back. I'm going to get away from his uh, field of fire. I'm going to put Napoleon behind this building here, 
so he doesn't get shot off his horse. That'd be very demoralizing if I lost Napoleon. Especially for my men, who worship him. Alright, so, now I'm bringing up more troops. These are my Fusiliers right here. And I'm going to outflank his flanking units here. And in response, my opponent sees what's going on, so he's going to shift his units to face my flanking force. So I'm going to outflank his flanking force. I just said that. Look at that, guys. So we're going to shoot at these guys. And at the same time, I'm going to bring these guys up, and I'm going to really outflank this guy from both sides here. So it's a good thing I preserved this unit of Fusiliers, but they're still effective. Now his guys are trapped. He can run if he wants, but they'll probably break if, if you try to now. Alright, so this guy's going to get hacked. Completely hacked. So yeah, here we are, trading fire. And now my opponent is going to try to charge my guys from behind. Not a bad idea because my guys are shooting the other way. So look at that. Boom! But it's cool though that my opponent's fighting me. But I will fight back. I got my old guard here. And these guys, out of all my troops, these guys love to fight the most. I, I, at least they're the best at it. I mean, historically, these guys were usually kept in reserve for the longest time. Because Napoleon was very reluctant to commit them. But when they when they were committed, they fought like like demons. Our men are running, sir. So I lost a unit. They routed, who are they? Those are the Fusiliers, whatever. Alright, those guys are gonna run, and I'm gonna take as many shots as I can. So to discourage them from coming back from routing, so Yeah. Take that, my friends. Run all the way back to wherever you came from. Alright, so. My opponent's still blasting me. After all the time, I would have thought my opponent would be low on ammunition. But they're just going to keep plucking away at me. Alright, what's this? There is some retrograde movement for my opponent. He's going to reform a, uh, a new line back here. So he's falling further back into his um, into his deployment section. And I am going to rest my troops because my opponent interrupted my, my I guess you could call it my, my beauty nap for my French troops. Yeah, reloading's good. And look at these units of musketeers here. They're coming out of this forest. I'm not sure where they came from. I think, I think they routed and then they they were hidden in the forest after they stopped routing. That's why they kind of disappeared from my view, I think. And you can see my voltage units are running up here. They're not running, but they're moving. Because I figured that the forest is clear for me to keep moving forward. And I want to, uh, you know, secure my flank against these the musketeers, so... Yeah, I'll do what I can. And I'm going to have these units of, musket of Fusiliers respond. There's only 32 Fusiliers in that unit versus his 39 in his Musketeer unit. Alright. So now i got my Skirmishers on my left firing now. So his guys are toast. Look at that. Boom. His guys route. Look at that. Let's watch them get picked off of my Skirmishers. Alright, one fell. Way back here. And I think they're out of range now, my guys. But yeah. That was a pretty sweet crossfire there. Alright, bringing up more guys. And this is a pretty long battle. Just, you know, in case you didn't realize, it is long. You can check your watches if you want. Alright, here go my skirmishers. And look at this. He has 12 horses in this uh, Lancer squadron here. And I'm taking shots at his guys right now. And I don't think I hit any of his guys. Let's see. No, they're going to keep strolling away from my from my voltage doors to the forest. So they, so they got away from my guys. 
And he was probably trying to wait for these guys to stop routing, hopefully. Uh, I'm just guessing what he's trying to do. And here I got a little confident. A little overconfident. I started rushing all my skirmishers forward here. I wanted to annihilate his, uh, his cav force. Because there were only 12 horses in that unit. So I started targeting his uh, horsemen, who just disappeared from view. But they're right here. They are now hidden. And here they come. He timed this, this charge perfectly. The reason why I say that is because my guys have not reloaded their guns. So look at that. I saw them reloading. None of them fired. And so his cab charges right in. Look at that. Boom. My guys are instantly down to 24 from 40 in that one charge. But I'm going to come from all sides and try to swarm his lancers. But clearly the damage is done. He, he took out so many of my voltage ores. And that could have been avoided. I just got way too overconfident in that pursuit with my voltage ores. And um, here's Napoleon. I brought him up here. I didn't want my skirmishers running away. So a little personal touch of uh, leadership here. Here's Mr. Napoleon. He's kind of sitting back here. And um, what's going to happen here? I forgot. His guys are routing. He, he's down to four men. To four horses in this uh, Lancer unit. So, I guess that's pretty cool. But yeah, th that, that was kind of a stupid mistake. Because like, yeah, one of my voltage yours is down to 12, and the other's down to 33. So that was very unexcusable. I lost so many skirmishers because of that careless positioning by me. Like, I, I should have just kept it closer to my to my Fusiliers back here. And the Fusiliers would have easily warded off his cav. But as it is, I, I messed up. And that happens in battle. You mess up. And then you have to live with it. And then you have to improvise. It's all a part of fighting battles. You got to do a lot of improv. Alright. So look at this movement from my opponent. He's... What is he doing? He's shifting his troops this way and that way. Here are his foot guards. This one's down to 65. Here is uh, Gerhardt von Schoenhurst. Here's another unit of musketeers. They're down to 42 men. He still has his foot artillery, but he's going to reposition them now. So here he's moving this way. Alright, what I want to do is kill his general. That would be perfect. He's going to charge at my guys. Is he? I forgot. I don't know. But they're hanging out up there though, and I have- I I'm more prepared this time. See how I have all my Fusiliers close to my, my skirmishers? And I'm not going to be careless with Napoleon either. I'm going to run away from his, uh, from Gerhardt. Because my general's down to 5 horses. His, his is down to 11. And this unit- where? This unit is down- they're out of ammunition here, these guys. So they are spent. I can still use them for melee purposes, though. And here's Gerhardt. It says they, he is losing slightly. But now I'm going to um, stop Napoleon from running away. And I'm going to swarm Gerhardt. So this is me swarming Gerhardt. Let's go ahead and watch the destruction of his general. He's probably going for my, for my skirmishers, because he always took them out earlier with that depleted unit of Lancers. So he probably thought he could take him out with Gerhardt. Because last time I kind of isolated my skirmishers, but this time I used better, you know, teamwork with my units here. And unfortunately, my opponent can only watch as his general dies. It's too late. They got stuck with my my men, and now his guys have no leader. So he has this unit of foot guards, and a unit of musketeers, and then these twelve pounder foot artillery pieces. Pretty sweet. I think. And you see all these French flags? You know, it looks like I have a huge advantage, but I really don't, because all my guys are depleted, see? One's down to 21, another's down to 19, another's down to 30. Um, I believe my old guard has a lot. My old guard has 65 men still. And I still have my general, so I have to rely on my, on my morale factor in order to win this battle and utilize my firepower. 
Here's my opponent though. He is. He's ready. He's getting ready for the final part of the battle. If you look at the minimap, you can see how far we are in the back. Like, like the town was the middle of the map, and you saw me take control of the town, so that meant I was already at my opponent's, you know, on his boundary. But now we're way in the back. So how far am I from here? Where am I? Alright, I'm dizzy. Alright, here, here we go. I'm gonna try to move down this way, this way. And as many skirmishers as I lost, I still have skirmishers. I have 11 plus 33, so that's 44 skirmishers. And I want to take advantage of my range, but my opponent still has better range because of his foot artillery. But it does take him a while to reload, though. So it's an interesting matchup, but his guys are almost um, unlimbered here. So they will be fired again very shortly. At my guys. Are they ready? Here we go again. Round two of of the pounding. This little rock is um, in the way of my deployment, but I will use a rock, you know, to my advantage, I suppose. I'll just conform to the map. But yeah, I can. I'll just go around it, I guess. Yeah, that's what I did. But look at my infantry. Look, look how depleted they are. Like, you see all my French flags, but you don't see how few troops I do have. Luckily, this unit of Old Guard are down to 65, so they have a chance. So, I'm going to use my skirmishers down this way. And I'm taking shots from his 12-pounders. Uh, but, yeah, I want to I wanna start targeting his dudes. But now my opponent's using the canister. And that is a real huge um, morale destroyer at, at close range like this. Dude, when this thing shoot, oh my gosh, you lose so many troops when it's this close to him. Here's an overhead. Let's watch the next um, canister shot from his artillery. It's very devastating. Look at that. Whoa! Right, I lost one guy in that shot. Look at that, that one killed like five of my guys. Plus, more guys over here. So that canister shot's really effective at, at this range. And here, I'm gonna use, use these guys to flank from the other side. See, I do have these guys in the front to take his, you know, to absorb his uh, fire from the front, and I'm gonna use these guys to flank. Alright, but I see one of his units peeling off, so there's foot guards. So we got 65 of my foot guards, or 65 of my old guards versus 65 of his guys, and now they're down to 56, and my guys are down to 63. Our men are running, sir. And now my skirmishers are opening fire on his artillery pieces, so that's good. Now they can feel the effects of war. And these foot guards are trying to take blows with my old guard. But my old guard's pretty awesome. So I have, I have confidence in my in the ability of my old guard to stand up toe-to-toe -to -toe against his foot guards. Plus I have that experience I've run. So that should play more to my advantage. Oh yeah, and Napoleon's still alive. So I have the morale going for me. And there go more of my guys dropping like flies. Like, I could come from the from the flank. But I, I can still be targeted though. It's just a matter of repositioning his cannons. Or you know, like face him the other way. But look at this, I I, I routed one of his uh, foot guard units, and that was my old guard. So my old guard prevailed, and this is the unit I showed earlier, they are out of ammunition, so now they're just going to charge into his artillery pieces. Our men are running, sir. But they never made it, so they never charged at his artillery. They ran away. Like cowards. Here's my old guard in range, and I just took a huge blast from his canisters again. Very sad when it happens to your elite units like this. But... Yeah, I lost a unit back here. I'm going to bring Napoleon in from the side. So, how ironic that Napoleon survives, because usually I lose my generals. But look at that, boom, finally! My determined advance and steady fire routed those units of his artillery. And these guys are routing too. 
so that's pretty much it. And that was a very hard fought battle. Victory for me. I had, let's see, I killed 597 of his guys, and I had 737 losses. Um, just a soldier, my opponent, he killed 624 of my guys, and he had 632 losses. So he killed more of me, but he had less troops. And, um, but, yeah, I lost tons of guys because of that early blitz I had against his, uh, against that town. So, yeah, of course I lost a lot of guys, but I gained a huge positional edge, and I exploited that. But very good game to Just a Soldier. He fought really well, very determined, and I hope you guys enjoyed this battle.